Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Thank you for never giving up on us. Father God, we ask you to bless us and keep us. We we ask you to help us to understand your word as we're reading it. We ask you, whether we're reading the devotion or reading your Bible, Father God, we ask you to give us understanding and help us apply it to our life. Help us to learn so much of it that we're able to help others, Father God. Father God, we ask you to pour into us what you want us to know. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are hearing it, bless the ones that are reading it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, key verse today is Matthew 20 and 30. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and they heard that Jesus was going by. They shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Topic, mercy on us. Affirmations. I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I am praising God. I'm listening to God. I am fearless. I have a clear mind. We can't allow people and things to stop us from calling on God. It's bad enough sometimes we have our emotions to slow us down in reaching out to God. And when this happens, it causes us to be diverted from calling on him. But we must stay focused. In this story, it was two blind men and who needed Jesus. They heard Jesus was coming th- their way and they started shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. Every, everyone around them told them to be quiet. And they didn't stop. because Why? Because they knew if they kept calling out to him that he would hear them. Do you believe that? Do you believe that through wherever the world is saying God is much bigger than this world? The men that walked around Jericho shouted because they knew they had the victory. Luke 17 and 15. The men, the one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. Songs 98 and 4. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth break forth into joy. Songs and sing praises. Isaiah 3 and 13. So that the people would not distinguish the sound of joyful shout from the sound of people's weeping. For the people shouted with a great shout and the sound was heard far away. See, shouting means victory. Shouting means I know he can hear me. Shouting means we know that if we shout, he could hear us and he can break through this spiritual fog. He can break through anything. Some of us are going through a spiritual fog because we aren't shouting enough to praise him. And some of us aren't shouting enough because we are lost with what we are, what we have going on. These men in this story didn't let blindness stop them from shouting for help. They didn't let what they lacked stop them. They shouted because they had faith to know he could heal them. Acts 3 and 38 says, And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Joy should make us shout. Believing God would answer us should make us leap and shout. A Holy Ghost shout. Because when we praise God and we believe, he makes sure we have. Because we took the time to show where our faith is. Where is your faith? Where is our faith in knowing that we can have a breakthrough? The fog that's there in our life isn't meant to break us. The enemy knows what to do at the right time. That's why we can't pay Pay the enemy any attention. That's why we must ignore everything he throws at us. It's hard to do. I know it is. But if we don't, we will be lost in our thoughts, lost in how we think we are losing. We aren't losing, my friends. We are gaining when we walk in God. Romans 8 and 31 says, when then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? We must have the world We might have the world telling us to stop praying, stop praising, stop reading our word. But in the word, it says this. If God is for us, who can be against us? The world can be against our ideals, against our desires, against our calling. But when we walk in the light, when we are walking with God, we don't have to have anyone but God in our corner. Because when we have God in our corner, it's like having a billion people on our side. We don't need the lights. We don't need the thumbs up. We don't, we don't need, we need God. We don't need all the subscribers. We need God. Colossians 3.23 says, wherever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. It says it here, work heartily for the Lord, not for men. What we do in our life, what we do for God, we don't do it for the glory of men, but for God. God is why we pray not to tell others not to tell others we pray. God is why we praise him, not for others to see us praise him. We do everything for God. And when we place everything on God, he will show us why 
we made the right choice. Choosing God, choosing praise, choosing his love is more important than choosing anything in this world. Today, look at your situation in your life. Ignore the rude remarks and the ugly ways of others. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your mind on Jesus and he will be there for you. No matter how loud they shout or how harsh the words can get to them and get to us. Ignore it all. Stay focused on the situation at hand. Stay focused on God. Most importantly, praise God through your circumstances. Keep calling his name through the fog. Don't let the fog stop you from reaching out to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to call out to you. We thank you for allowing us to be near you. We thank you for giving us forgiving us of our sins or help us to be more like you help us to see through the fog help us to stay focused on you and not what's going on and what's happening we thank you for what we already did what you already did we praise you for for all that you do lord we desire to make you happy show us your will for our life show us more of you give us more wisdom and knowledge in jesus mighty name amen so the topic today it's mercy on us. See, these men were shouting because they knew that God would hear them. They knew Jesus would hear them. They knew if they kept shouting that he would hear them. And no matter how many times these people told them to be quiet, I'm quite sure someone probably hit them because they were blind. They probably shook them because they was blind. They probably did whatever to make them be quiet because they, they thought that if they bothered Jesus, that Jesus, it would stop them maybe for getting something. Maybe this was their mindset. Who knows? But in my mind, for you to make two people be quiet, you wanted them to be quiet because you didn't want Jesus to be distracted with them. You wanted Jesus to see you. See, that's another thing where people, this, what we look at when we read the word, we must look at it in a spiritual sense that people will do anything to divert you from your praise. People will do anything to stop you from getting closer to Christ. People would do anything to stop you from doing what you need to do, which is holy and righteous living. Because if they hit you hard enough, if they say the right words, they know that will divert you. But what they don't understand is that when you're a child of God, words don't bother you. People saying things doesn't bother you. The enemy planting seeds in your head doesn't bother you because you know who hears you. You know that when you cry out that Jesus will lean down, God will lean down, and he will hear your cry. That was the difference. And they kept pressing on. And that's the thing that we must do is keep pressing on. Even Paul, Paul was beat so many times with lashes. The Romans had him captured into prison. They beat him with, with these lashes, the same lashes they beat Jesus, but they, he got beat so much that you would think that would stop Paul from going out witnessing. You would think that would stop Paul from being a missionary. You think that would stop Peter from doing what he needed to do, but it didn't. These men kept pushing forward. Because they knew who was on their side. When you know who's on your side, when you know the world can do whatever, you know no weapon formed against you should prosper because you have God. And these men, they needed that. They heard the stories. They couldn't see them, but they heard the stories. That it was a great man walking around, touching and healing lives. They knew it. And they kept calling. And they kept calling. Let's go to that story real quick. Go to Matthew 20 and 30. It's not part of our reference, but we're going to go ahead and go right to it. Because we need to get to it. Go to Matthew 20. I'm in the NLT, like always. Um, Matthew 20. What is it? Matthew 20. And 30. Matthew 20 and 30. Okay, we're going to start at verse 29. And Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho. A large crowd followed behind. Let's stop there. I like to think this is the same Jericho that Joshua's at. Maybe I'm wrong. But if this is so, let's, let's just say this is so. These men shouted for victory. Jericho shouted for victory. Because 
in our praise, in our shouting, we will find victory. We will find a safe haven. We will find the Lord. The Lord will show up in our praise. That's why they tell people to praise God. They tell people to worship God because when you do that, you're welcoming the presence of God around you. This evening, I was, I was, I just got out of the shower and I had my praise music going on. And I always tell y'all I can't sing because I, I can't, but I'm singing on top of my voice. I have my, my, my speakers going and, and it's, it's thumping and it's loud and I'm just raising my hands. I'm lifting it up and I'm shouting hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I'm singing. And I'm praising. I'm not focused on nothing else, but the presence of God in his presence came in just like that. And it came in so hard that it felt like it was such a heaviness in our room because his presence was there. When we praise him, when we shout and we don't care about our circumstances, we don't care about what Bob and had to say in accounting today. We don't care about what this person, that person said. We don't care about the seeds of the enemy being planted in our head. We only care about our God showing up in the room, our God showing up in the car, our God showing up in the prayer closet. And when he shows up, he takes away your worry. He takes away your frustration. And when you're in his presence, you're not going to sit there and name, have a wish list. You're going to be focused on his presence. You're going to be focused on, I don't want him to leave. I think I've said this on podcast several times. I cry because I don't want him to go. I don't want that presence to go. And I cry. And I tell him, please don't leave me. Because in our victory, in, in our praise is our victory. And these men knew it. And imagine if that was the same Jericho that Joshua was in. Those people shouted for victory. These men shouting for, for Christ to touch them for victory over their, their shortcomings, over their blindness. Let's go on and look at Will Father. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began to shout, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But the, they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus is asking us that right now. He said, what do you want me to do for you? What is it that you want? Why do you, why are you in my presence? What do you want? Is it something you need or do you want to just be close to me? He's asking us this because he wants to give us the desires of our heart, but our will must be his will. Our mindset must be his mindset. When we, when he asks us this question, I had Christ ask me this one time. I was, I couldn't sleep. Uh, and I, I was, my mom's like, Lou, you needed this ask. Ask him, you know, what you need, because you need to sleep. And I, I, I had really bad insomnia. It was nights I would go weeks and weeks without sleeping, and it didn't bother me. I wasn't drowsy or nothing. I just couldn't sleep. And so one day I, I, I said, just like this, just as plain. So this tells you, you could talk to, to talk to God just as plain. No kind of elaborate words, no big vocabulary. If you use that, that's fine. But I'm showing you the simplicity of just a simple word. I walked in my room. I shut the door. I said, Jesus, I said, could I ask you something? And the Holy Spirit said, yes. I said, could, could you help me go to sleep at night? I, I can't sleep. He says, is that all you want? Just like that. And I could have asked. In my mind, I felt like I could have asked for a million dollars. I could have asked for a big home, big car. I didn't. I just want the simplest thing, which was sleep. I said, that's, that's all I wanted. He's okay. Just like that. So I didn't think nothing of it. Turn off my light. I sat there, meditated like I normally do. Got through a meditation, laid down. As soon as my head hit the pillow, out. And from that day forth, I have not had a problem with sleeping. Simplicity. All he's looking for us to do is shout and praise him for what he's doing in our life. 
All he wants us to do is be simple and talk to him. These men could ask for anything. Let's go on. It says, verse 33, Lord, they said, we want to see. Just as simple. Lord, they said, we want to see. I should make that a memory verse. Anyway, Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. And instantly they could see. Then they followed him. See, this is another spiritual a spiritual thing I want us to see. Just by the touch of Jesus, we can see. When we allow him to touch every facet of our life, he will open our eyes so that we may see what we're doing. And he will may remove the covering off our eyes. See, this is spiritual right here. This is this is a deeper meaning than what is read. That when we allow him to touch us, we can instantly know what we're doing wrong. We can instantly follow him because he will let us know what we're doing in our life. When we allow him to touch us, he will instantly remove things out of our life that we shouldn't have. Because we allow him to touch us, not just parts of us, not just little facets of us, not into just the parts that we think that he should be part of. But Lord, raise your hands. If you're if you're available to do it, raise your hands right now. Say, Lord, take in a deep breath. Touch me. Remove anything that's in me. Remove anyone that's in around me. So I may be closer to you. So I may see spiritually. I want to see spiritually. And when we pray prayers like that, if you just pray that. You had a contrite heart. You just didn't say it just because I said, hey, lift your hands, say it. No, you really mean it. He will open your eyes so that you may see. You start letting things that wasn't bothering you will bother you because you're in a different realm of the spirit. See, when you grow in God, different realms of the spirit will be opening you. Different things that didn't bother you will bother you because you're sensitive to it. All that cussing in movies and TV, all that cussing that's in songs and lyrics, all that cussing that's, that people will do around you. You're like, no, 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 don't, don't do that around me, please. Or people would just automatically, you know, I have people that would cuss and they look at me like, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, it's okay. I'm just, you know, a normal person. And they'd be like, oh, I know, but it's just, I want to respect the anointing that you're carrying. See, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the Christ that's in you. When you start caring Christ, which we all do, we must be careful what we allow to enter our ear gates and our eye gates. And even our hands, we must be careful what we do with our hands. Okay? Let's look at some references. Um, first reference we're going to look at is James 5 and 13. Go to James 5 and 13. If you have a few minutes sometime today, this weekend, Read James. I think it's only five. I actually think it's just five um, chapters in James. Yes, it is. It's an easy read. It's, it's very subtle. And at, have the Holy Spirit to lead you to read this. It's, it, it's so much in James. I call James the meaty chapter, the meaty book, because they have so much in it. I mean, the whole Bible do, but when you focus on what's in there, it, it tells you about things that you should know or need to know on your your relationship with Christ. Okay, so we're going to go to James 5.13. In the NLT, it says this. Are any of you suffering hardship? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing a song of praise. See, it tells us here. If you're suffering hardship, you should pray. If you're, if you, if are any of you unhappy or happy, you should sing praises. Even when you're not happy, you should sing praises. And that's hard to do. I've had some tough days and, um, a song, I, I have a playlist of 103 songs. So when I praise them, I, I have normally whatever songs is on there, I can sing. Like I said, I cannot sing, but I know the words. And I come home from a hard day and it's, a song comes on. And I might be mumbling because I've had a hard day. But when I get to thinking about the goodness of God and I get to thinking about him bringing me through my day and I get to thinking about things that he have done for me, 
I have to stop and say, let me shout a praise to God. Let me shout a praise for God. Let me sing a song into his presence. And I start singing in the feeling of aggravation and the feeling of being overwhelmed just falls off of me. And peace settles on me. Because the word says, sing a praise if you're happy. And we might not be happy then. Like a lot of people say, oh, I'm unhappy. I'm just an unhappy person. No, you're unhappy in your situation, but you're happy in general because you are filled with joy with Jesus. And a lot of people be like, well, you don't understand. You don't understand my struggle. I do understand your struggle. I've had moments in my life that I didn't have food to eat. I've had moments in my life I couldn't pay my bills. I've had times in my life where I was heartbroken. I've had times in my life that I was trying to get past a certain sin and couldn't figure out how to do it. But when I let go, I allowed God to help me. Or when I couldn't pay my bills, he paid my bills. I've had moments like that. But what I learned in those moments is to still praise God. It's to still think of that I have joy in the inside because he had brought me through so much. And I shout and I give him the praise. We have to learn to shout and give God the praise. We have to start taking the focus off us and put the focus on God. If you have your Bible, still go to Hebrews 13 and 15. That's the next uh, reference verse is Hebrews 13 and 15. Pass right by it. Pages are sticking. They're truly sticking today. Okay, 13 and 15. Hebrews 13 and 15. I'm sorry, I think I said Hebrews 13 and 5. But it's Hebrews 13 and 15. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual praise of God. Pray, let's start over. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our alliance to his name. It tells us right here. Let's look at the NIV. Through him, then let us continue to offer up a pray, sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. I like the NIV version better. So I'm going to reread it. Therefore, through him, then let us continually offer up a pray, sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Our lips when we praise them, when we sing, some people even spiritually, they do a spiritual dance or a, I think, I don't know what they call it, but I don't call it spiritual dance. They dance to Christian music. That is the fruit of you. The, your, you singing is your fruit of your lips. You're doing that to honor God. It's a sacrifice because you're sacrificing your time. You sacrifice your body, being able to praise God. The Hebrews tells that. Let us continuously offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. If you acknowledge the name of God, if you know who's the king of kings, if you know Jesus died and rose again, he's the Alpha and Omega. If you know this, you have acknowledged of his name. Let the fruit of your lips offer sacrifices to God by praising him. We're going to stop right there for today. But let me tell you something, people. When we praise God, we are breaking chains of bondage, depression, anxiety, bondages of uh, oppression, bondages of trauma being broken. I've had things happen to me. And when I praise and give those traumas to God, he was able to cut me free from those chains. If you're dealing with something that's heavy, if you're dealing with you can't get past a certain point or you're dealing with a hard day, a hard manager, put them before God and let God know how thankful you are for what he's going to do by singing a praise to him. We can't stop praising God. We must always let our mouth be filled with praises to God. Even when you wake up, God, I thank you for loving me. God, I thank you for watching over me while I sleep. God, I thank you for watching over me while I go back and forth to work. God, I thank you for everything you've given me. That's the fruit of your lips because you're acknowledging that he is king. So when you have time, you don't have to do it now. Put on some worship music. And I like doing, I like praising God with music I know. 
words I know. Because I feel like then I'm actually saying the words and not skipping over it. Um, one of the songs I simply just enjoy. I'm going to see if I can play it real quick. So I'm running out of time. I need you now by Smokey Norfolk. This right here. Like a second or another minute. Not an hour or another day. But it ain't. This song praises what I do. You want to get songs that helps you praise him. You don't want to get songs you don't know. Now, I like the older Christian music. You, you can play what you want. But you want to play songs that enables you to sing how you feel. God is able. Smoky Norfolk. Now, I don't have the copyrights of any of those songs. But these are the songs that I like listening to when I praise God. Because... Praise helps us through the most vulnerable moments in our life because we are being vulnerable with God. I pray you all enjoy this devotional. Remember, Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Have a blessed day.